Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We are just going to set this one going again, up across the field right here, like that. There he goes, he's away. And our planting is going very well, it must be said. Over there, we've got, uh, let's go over and have a look. Coming right up to the very end of the field, it's doing everything neat and tidy, just as we would hope. There we go, look at that. He's doing a wonderful job. And he's busy planting barley. So we're going to have a field full of barley here that we're going to be able to harvest. We're going to make an absolute fortune out of it. But that is not what we're after today. Today we would like to go in here. I can't... Well, I don't see any sprayers offhand in my mods list. So I'm, I'm sure there are other sprayers around. We'll worry about that one a little bit later. We go here into fertilizer technology, however, you can see I've got a couple of extra options right here. I've got that one. This one here has got, um, they're both, well, that one's got a thousand liters, but it's also available to take lime. I got that one by Stevie, which has added lime. This one has lime in it anyway, so I, what's the difference between these two? Oh, he's increased the speed on that one. This one here is actually the one that I quite like, this coon right here. Um, it is 16 and a half grand, whereas these over here are quite cheap. they much smaller, though. Right? There's a lot less room in these. That one's, that one's actually a little bit... Oh, no, that, that one there is the only one that takes the lime. So you can put lime into this one if you want, and then there's an extension. So we've got the 700, or we've got the 1,000 on that one. So we can go up to 1,000 litres. We can have a cover on it if we want to, but that's an extra 500. That takes it up to 5,500, but it only holds 1,000 litres, but it does take lime. So that is our most likely option because of the price. This one over here is absolutely fanschmastic. I really, really like this one. You've got a number of different options with it. We've got the 1,400. You can go to a 19. You can go to a 2,700 or a 3,200 on there. So it goes all the way up to that big. Plus it's fully modelled with it as well. And that's the bit that I really like is it's fully modelled with the extensions and everything. We've got anti-mud guards on here that you can go and put on. Um, again, a really cool little thing. Uh, we've got a cover option if we want that one. Then transport wheels. And this is a bit that I really like is the transport wheels. Is You can put those on and it sits down on the ground the right height for the hydraulics as well so you put that down on the ground you can sort of move it around when it's down on the ground and just generally i, I really like that one and then you've got a choice between three different sets of working widths it doesn't actually come up with anything different on here with the working widths but you've got choices between how wide you would like everything to be so obviously some farms a narrower spread would be better and uh, you'd, you'd sort of, you obviously you'd travel further along the field. I think it does do it like that. But anyway, so there's your various options that you've got with this one. And you can have it, when all of the options, we chuck everything, is $21,000. Now, that's a lot of money. 3,200 litres is absolutely fantastic. But it is a lot of money. So I'm thinking that we want to go with the Cavernland Exactor EL700. Not this one, though. This is the one that we've already got. We want to go for that one. This one takes lime. Now, that this one over here is just 700 litres. This other option, though, this one allows us to take an extension on it there. So we've got a little bit extra on the top. We could go with the cover this time round. And it will allow us to spread lime. And I think the cover would be a good idea because... Um, you just didn't stop things getting wet and dirty and so on. So that one right there, that's the one that I would like to use. So we're going to buy that one, yes, for $6,000. I'm going to go back. And we got $34,000 left. Now, that might actually... 30, <laughs> it's 35000 to get that one. We could just go with this one, right? It's 1,300 litres, 30 grand. I know it's quite expensive, but it will cover them. We don't, we don't exactly have a huge farm at the moment. So if we buy that one, we've got everything that we want, except for some lime. We do want a little bit of lime. Now, we've only got one pallet at the moment. Um, 
Big bags is what we want. Uh, we've, we don't even have room, with our lime spreader, we don't even have room for a single pallet. So there's a slight problem with that, is, you know, we are limited a little bit. However, it's only $450 per bag. The expensive bit is going to be getting the herbicide, but we'll worry about, we can worry about that another time. So we're going to get a few bags of lime in here, and I'm going to get, there's one, and two, three, four, five bags of lime. I think five is about right. Maybe we want a little bit more than five, maybe we don't, I'm not really sure. But there we go, we've now got 1,750 left. The next thing that we're going to do is we've got a fertilizer spinner in the yard. How much is, let's go and see how much is actually in that fertilizer spinner. I don't think there's very much in it at all, but uh, if there is something in there, we will just empty it out. There's no point in throwing money away just for the sake of it. So we'll empty that out and put, leave it here in a bag. I'm going to need to get my trailer over to the dealership in order to go and kill... Oh, it's it's literally 20 litres. It's, it's probably not really worth bothering with for 20 litres, but we'll do it anyway. We will do it anyway. I'm going to leave that tractor right there, and then I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit like that, and... No, I'm just going to have to tab through everything like this. Okay, it's, it's literally tabbing through everything right now. Stop tabbing through everything and just bring me my fertilizer spinner. Should be here in a minute. Splendimo, UM, there's the trailer. That's the one I want. Right, reset that one back to the shop. Yes, okay. Like that. And then we want to actually go to the shop. Now, we've got our forklift over here at the shop, which we will be able to use. I was thinking of having to use the trailer to get everything loaded up, but I don't think we will. We'll be able to use the forklift to do that. That's what the forklift is here for. That's what the bad boy was brought here for. This is why the shop has it. All ready and raring to go. So let's go and hitch this on a minute, like that. Uh, I'll move this forward and just put it out the way a second. Then we can start loading up these items. We're also going to sell the other fertilizer spinner. So we'll get the shop tractor a second, like this. Take that one and hitch up that fertilizer spinner over there and we will sell that one. And then the rest of the stuff, we can get that transported back home. I, do, I mean, we've got 10,000 liters of lime right here with the five bags. I do not think that we're going to have any issues with running out of lime. So I don't think that we need to worry about that. That is my slight concern, obviously, that, you know, if we do run out, then... Uh, we've got to come all the way back to the shop and we've got to get one more pallet, which is a little bit of a nuisance. But I can't see 10,000 litres not being enough. So I'll sell that one for $2,934. Just like that. That gives us over four and a half grand to play around with. We'll put the sprayer and the fertiliser spinner onto the trailer there. And then I will go and get the forklift and we can load up the pallets. They can go on that trailer as well. And then we've got to go take them over to the farm and make our delivery. So, oh, I know what we can do. Because I don't have a herbicide tank at the moment. Back at the yard. Uh, here. Hang on. Go to garage. We've only got two tanks at the moment. We've uh, Well, we've got a fuel tank as well. We do have fuel. But we don't have... See, we've only got those two. Solid fertilizer and seed. I don't have herbicide. And that was something that I was just talking about. So we can either go and buy one of them, which I think is, un is it under silos or is it under... No, it's not under silos, that's storage. It's uh, under miscellaneous, it'll be. And right here, look, see, liquid fertilizer we definitely don't want, but a herbicide tank, ooh, that's eight and a half grand. Right, so a herbicide tank is a little bit expensive. Going back through, though, oh, we do have a lime station, but that's 30 grand. Again, little bit expensive, so it's a bit out of our price range at the moment. So we'll go here to pallets, and we will go for a herbicide tank. That's 2,000 litres of herbicide right there, 2,400. I can only afford to buy one, but fortunately, I can afford to buy it. And we're not going to need more than one. Uh, 2,000 litres of herbicide 
will be more than enough to do any spraying that we need to do to start with. So I'll bring this sprayer back here. My only concern, only slight concern, is that we're not going to have quite enough room to put all of this. Now, I'm hoping that I can leave that one up on there without it falling off. If I can leave it up there, we'll be able to get the rest of the pallets onto the lower steps of the tractor without any of the tractor of the trailer without any problems. So long as they don't fall off in transit. That's going to be obviously that's going to be a slight concern is them falling off in transit, but I don't think they will. I don't think that's going to be an issue. We'll soon find out though, won't we? So we'll lower you down like that and that one goes almost right down to the ground anyway. I like that. And we'll do that. And yeah, I know it's like hooking into the PTO. It's it's clipping in, but it wouldn't actually be doing that. You would just move the PTO out of the way. So we can just say that it's not actually clipping in. It's a figment of your imagination. That is all. It's not actually doing it. It's simply a figment of your imagination. Now, before we get started on that, we've got another job that we need to go and do. And that is... Let this one finish. We'll run this one up and we'll also go up with it to get it past the stone so it can keep working on the larger area of the field and we will deal with the smaller volume of the field a little bit later on. So you go all the way up to there like that. There and I'm going to just turn that one off right now. Actually, I'm, the, the, I was just thinking it's that one there. It's not, is it? That's the... Um, that's the fertilizer. We need to go over here to the herbicide. Uh, not the herbicide. The 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 um the seed tank. Seed. This is what we're looking for. Seeds. Bring you back over to here. Lower you down. Open you up like that. And fill that one all the way up. There we go. I don't know if we're going to do all of this in two... I don't think we... Oops, steady. I don't think we're going to. I don't think that we're going to complete all of this land in two hopper loads i think that we're going to get and we're going to have to get another hopper load in a minute as well now bring you over here like this i know i'm going a little bit tight to this side but i'd rather do that than um accidentally leave a slight gap doesn't really make a huge amount of difference not overall now what are you going to do you're going to be a good boy and go on up through yes he's going to be a good boy he's going to go up through there but whether or not he's going to actually get past the stone here is another matter entirely it's done this before it sort of came up here and then it decided to turn around and do some very weird hinky things so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring it to there and then i'm going to press h on that i'm going to move it ever so slightly over and then I'm going to press H again, and I'm going to hope that it will actually get through. Now, it might, it might not. Sometimes it does weird things. So we'll leave that one going, and we will go back over here. Uh, yeah, I want to go to you. We go back over here, and let's just lift that one up there a second. We will do a little bit of work over on this side. Just keep half an eye on the... Um, the Agro Star 6 and the, and the load that we're doing over there. Right, I actually don't want to pick the pallet up that way round. I want to pick the pallet up from the side, slightly wider on that side. That's where we want to pick it. We want to pick it up from this side, over here. So it's side on and not end on. Alright, it's great that you can turn the forklift really, really sharp. But at the same time, with the old keyboard steering that we're using... It can make life a little bit tricky at times. Right, we'll grab that one there. There we go. 2,000 litres of herbicide. Swing you in over here like this. And... See, it's, it's the, the speed that I can turn the wheels. It, it, it does make a little bit of a difference. But we're, we're, we're getting it. We're, we're doing all right. And bring you over like that. Just straighten up a little bit like that, I think. There. Right, that'll do. And then I can simply move it like that. Down a little bit. Nope, down a bit more. 
down a bit more. There we go. Right, that is done there. Now I'm just going to quickly tab back over and check that this one does do its turn okay and doesn't try to do anything strange. It's not going to do anything strange at the moment. I'm going to leave that one go. I'm not going to do anything else to it. So now I've got to get five pallets of this loaded up. Now, there's two different ways that we can do this. We can do it one pallet at a time or we can try and do two at a time. Personally, I think taking two at a time is the preferential method. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to lower down the forks like that. And I'm going to shove them up like that. And yeah, I know it's sort of pulling out like that. And now... Well, I've got... Well, I'll take that one pallet... That, actually, no, I'm not going to take that one pallet like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this side. I'm going to spin round on here. And then I'm going to pick that one up square on, if I can. I'll lower it down a bit. Right, there we go. Right, we've picked that one up square on, and I'll take that one round to the other side and put that onto the trailer. And then we've got two lots of two to load up. And this is why I like auto-load trailers, because if you don't use auto-load, it takes a very, very long time to do anything. As we know from our experiences with the wool pallets back at the farm. Let's um, actually put that onto the trailer there, shall we? There we go. Right, so I know that like the, the wool pallets back at the yard, it takes quite a while to move those around. It's a time-consuming... I've got to stop looking at the wheels and keep looking at the actual machine. If you look at the wheels and you turn... Uh, um, the wheels, the direction you think that they should be going because we're going forward, it generally doesn't work. It's surprising. Like, normally, you're looking at the... Because you're using the wheels and their position as a point of reference for when you're playing. So when you're using a rear wheel steer, if you're not careful doing it out of cab, you end up using that same point of reference that you normally do, but you end up looking at it backwards, which then becomes a bit of a jolly nuisance causes problems. Don't want a jolly nuisance. Right. I'll take you off over this way. I've got to remember I've got four tons of lime on me at the moment. Right, this is, this is a, a huge amount of product that I've got here. Now, I want to lift that up a little bit like that. Bring that round. And that's actually a nice clean load on there. I'm seriously considering getting us a Manitou back at the yard, especially as we start to expand the sheep a little bit. Right, if we've got one of these back at the yard, it should, in theory, make life a lot easier for us for when we are um, moving those pallets around, because it, it's definitely slightly easier moving the pallets with the forklift than it is doing it with anything else. And I did say that wool pallets from the sheep, we would do, do those manually. We wouldn't use autoloader for doing those. Uh, mainly because the autoloader doesn't seem to work very well. Uh, if you drop the autoload onto the cell point, it doesn't actually seem to do anything. So that, that does influence my decision on it. Just, just a tiniest fraction. Go on. No, go, go, go forwards. Oh, it's... It seems to be doing... It was... It's rear wheel drive. Like it was going backwards, but it wasn't turning because the wheels that were trying to go backwards were the rear wheels, not the front wheels. There is a huge amount... It's, the weight on this is quite phenomenal. There is a lot of weight on these two pallets. And, I mean, I like that. I like the fact that we're getting so much weight on these pallets. It certainly contributes to the challenge of moving stuff around and makes it more interesting for when we're handling them with the, the loader here. Alright. Well, like that. Gently does it. There! Okay, I've now got those loaded on. Hopefully, they will stay there. This is my concern now, is whether or not they're going to slide off. We know that machinery does 
pretty well lock onto the machine, but does the pallets lock onto the machine as well? That's something I'm not so sure about. We'll drop you down there. We don't need to worry about the yard. Um, the, the machine's back at the yard. So we'll get you onto here, and we will back you over. If... I, mean, I don't know if there are straps available on the trailer. If there are straps available on the trailer, we'll put straps on, and that should help to hold the pallets in place. So I'll lift you up like that. We've got 2,000. We've got 2,000 herbicide, 10,000 lime on there. Straps. Right, I've pressed L. There are no straps turning up. There's nothing. So... The fact that it's showing 2,000 litres of herbicide and 10,000 lime suggests to me that that has now become a part of the machine. Plus, we've also got empty containers as well. 2,300 empty. That would be the combined capacity of the sprayer and the fertiliser spreader. So that's suggesting to me that they're part of the trailer now and not just sitting on it as a separate entity, which suggests very strongly that it has indeed actually locked the things in place. So we should be able to get there without any problem. I did talk about this last time when I moved something. I don't remember what it was that I was moving. It was the, the last item that we bought, whatever that was. What was it that I last bought? Oh, it was the combine, wasn't it? It was the combine. It was the capacity of the combine. It was being picked up by the actual trailer. So it does appear to have done the same, and more importantly, it appears to have done it with the pallets, which means that, well, they're not drifting around at all, are they? So it doesn't appear to be much danger of them falling off. Now, when we went across the bridge going the other way, things fell off, but I think that wasn't because they just slid off. I think that was because the ground pushed up underneath the trailer, and then caught the machine and that dragged it off the trailer so it didn't slide off like it, it didn't actually physically slide off it got caught and pulled off by uh, the ground as it sort of clipped through the bottom of the trailer that's what caused the issue and so long as that is what has caused the issue we, it, we know that we can go this way we can get all the way from the shop to the farm without any issues going in this direction the road going the other way, the bridge is the bit that causes the problem, but this is something that we've noticed in other maps as well, is that bridges do seem to cause problems. Helper F has completed their task, so that should mean that all of the cultivating is done. We know that ploughing is not done and that the field does actually need to be ploughed. We're not going to do it, though. We're not going to worry about that. Um, I mean, in theory, we could... We, I was... You know, doing the lime, we probably should have done the lime before we started planting. Um, but I'm quite happy to do the lime now. In theory, maybe we could have we could leave the lime until the next harvest and then spread the lime after the harvest and then put the plough going and plough in the lime that we go and spread onto the field. And I am seriously considering doing that. Right? Because we'll be doing the ploughing and the lime, and we could do, and we could go straight through and do another barley harvest, and we'll be able to run a direct comparison then, and really see how much of a difference it is. Because I know that they talk about percentages, and you get percentages being quoted at you all the time with the game. You, know, you get thirty percent extra for this, you get ten percent extra for that. But I mean, really, when you when you look at it, and it says, well, you get this much extra, and you lose this bit if you don't do that, and you you lose that if you don't do that. How many of you actually sit there and think, right, well, that means that we get 100 litres of barley off of it this time, and if we do all of those things next time, we get 127.2 litres? Because I don't. I look at these things, and I think, yeah, well, that's great and all, but... Wait, why have you stopped? You shouldn't have stopped. It has, though. It's the sign. The sign being in the way over there. Right, well, we want to... First, we'll move you... Because you're just being a pain. I know why it's doing it. It's because of that sign. So let's knock the sign over like that. And then hopefully when it comes back down, it won't. Um, the sign won't be in the way of it. We can bring that one back to there like that. And then just press H on there. And then pick up the road sign. 
I've done this several times now. I've taken that sign and chucked it over there. Hopefully that one will just carry on. We've got a little bit there that it hasn't done, so I might have to go and replant that afterwards. I'll worry about that later. I need to get this delivery back to the yard. Get these things unloaded. Very, very tempting. I know that we've gone and bought the lime and we've bought the lime spreader and everything. We've got the whole lot here. But we don't need to put any more fertilizer on the field. So I'm actually really tempted, despite the fact that I've gone and bought these items, I'm tempted to not use them at all. Not even a little bit. Just just no use for these whatsoever this time round. No um, weed killer. No lime. We haven't got the plowing done either. We have got the fertilizer boosts. So we'll, we could take this with just the fertilizer boost. No weed killer, no lime, no plowing. And see what the yield is. And then we do another crop of barley. So we, we, we'll just go and plant barley straight away after we've done this. And then we can compare the two. And I think this could actually be quite an interesting thing to do. Just, just to see what the differences in yield are going to be. I'm, 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 I'm liking this idea. I really am. I, I'm thinking this is one of my better ideas. I have no doubt that many people will disagree with me. I'm going to park that one there a minute, and I'm not going to do anything else with it for a second. I'm going to go over here. Because we've got everything that we need now, so we don't need to worry about the money. That means that we're not pressured to go and cut down loads more trees if we don't really want to. Because, let's be honest, cutting down trees does get a little bit dull after a while. And we've done an awful lot of cutting down trees. So, taking a break from cutting trees for a week or two is certainly not going to hurt. We can get the old um, stump grinder and do a little bit with that, should we wish to. We've got... Oh... Well, he's doing his stuff over there. I'm just going to run up through here and just double check that we have indeed got all of the grass. We have indeed got all of the grass. We've, we've got everything here. We don't need to do anything else with that. Right, that's good. And you over there, you've got one tiny little patch just there that hasn't actually been spread with seed. No matter. We can deal with that next time. So this one here, I will run this one back. We want to hose this one off. I will park this one up and then... Well, I'm, I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. Um, in the morning, we should have a decent price coming back for wool. Because the price for wool is ever so steadily increasing. If we look into this one right here. Wool right now is at 786 and is going up. Silage is going up. Right? Silage is definitely going up. We possibly missed that because we sold them like 290 something. When we sold our silage. So there's definitely... We could have done a fair bit better out of that. Now we'll repair the tract of a 360. This is... Oh, no. No, wait. Uh, $300 on that one. Shut you off a minute. Go back to this one over here. And stop. I've only got $300 left. I'm going to take this one over and we're going to fill it back up with seed again because we might actually need the seed. We've got the hired help going, so there's obviously spinning down a little bit of our money. We're going to need to make sure that we are indeed able to finish planting the field because if we can't plant the field, that's going to have a rather detrimental effect on our plans for trying to find everything out. And I can't quite fill up the sprayer. At uh, the sprayer, the, the, the seed drill. $296. That takes it up to 91% left. And we've got that big square patch there. I don't think we're going to be able to do it all. We may end up having to sell a little bit of timber. Going on. I mean, we did only use... We used half of the thingy. We've used about half of it. So we, we might get away with this because we, we have done a fair chunk with using half of the seed drill. I Yeah, I, I think we might actually be all right. I, I don't think it's going to be um, the end of the world. But now we're in negative equity. We can just go along and do it because this is one thing that we can do. We can repair the vehicles even though we don't have any money. So we can do that, repair that one, and we can repair that one for $30 as well. That bit's done. And I can go over to the sprayer over there and we will clean off the tractor, the front weight, and the uh, cultivator. Hose all of these things off. And then when we've done that, we can park them up. And then we can have a look at clearing... Some, well, I can't clear that stuff off of there yet because the loader tractor is busy in the field. 
So we'll have to just leave the lorry there for a minute. All just parked and, and looking shiny. Uh, not do anything with it. Yeah, see, we're minus $420 now. Wouldn't be able to buy any more seed. If we'd not done it when we did. It's good. I'm, I'm very pleased that I don't normally notice such things. I mean, we can't go and buy any fuel for any of our tractors because you can't do negative equity situations with fuel. All you can do it with is repair work, as far as I know. I don't think there's anything else you can buy when you have no money. It's just repairing the vehicles. So, fuel. If we run out of fuel and we got no money, that's it. It's game over. Well, it's, it's not exactly game over. You, you just go along and you, you, you use your chainsaw, because chainsaws don't have any uh, fuel costs. So, we can use our chainsaw, and we can cut trees down by hand, and we can carry this tim the timber by hand over to the sawmill. Should every single vehicle we own run out of fuel? Highly unlikely that that's actually going to happen, though. I don't think that is something that we need to concern ourselves with. Right, let's go and put you down over there, and then we can jump into you. Go and park this one up. Now, where am I going to drop that? I think I've been leaving the cultivator just here, haven't I? Somewhere like this. And what we are going to be doing is getting a new shed. And we may end up getting the new shed in the morning. Once we can... S Let's just drop that one down like that. There we go. Once we can get a... Oh. Now, this is a question. Should I put a new shed in now before I plant that bit between the rock and here? Or should I wait... Because if we're going to run a direct comparison between two... Have a look at this. Right, if, if we're going to be running a direct comparison between two harvests, between two separate harvests, then we either need to buy the shed now, or we need to wait until we've done all of our harvest, both harvests, before we buy the shed. So I either need to buy something and put it in there right now, or wait. I don't know. I mean, I can do it in the morning. It doesn't matter if we plant it a little bit extra because the whatever's left will end up getting planted anyway. So we can wait until morning, but the, the, that's an interesting question there that needs to be answered, doesn't it? We've still got to wait for this to be planted, and we can't speed time up until all of it has been planted. Otherwise, it's um, we, we're going to have crops that are growing in the wrong order. So we'll, but we'll, we can worry about that tomorrow. I need to get this one unloaded. And I might just be able to push those off the trailer or something. I'm not really sure how we're going to do that yet. Um, unless I, I might swap the tractors over, actually. This one can go on and do the seeding. And then the other tractor can come over and it can start lifting these off and moving stuff around and, and getting it all put away. And then we can worry about that. But anyway, I have run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.